Hey guys, so the title of this video is going to be something like, are you up for the radio challenge, see beyond the veil, and um, for anyone who's new, I know this kind of sounds like um, an extraordinary claim, but that's how much I believe in this radio challenge. I mean, I don't just believe it, I know it's real. Um, I know it's real because of my own experiences with it. I don't think life is random. Like, what if I told you there's something in the future that's already happened that's rippling back to impact our current time? And I think that future event is the reason why the world seems so polarized. The higher collective consciousness is separating itself from the lower collective consciousness and it happens one person at a time so um if you're noticing like an uptick in synchronicities then you're probably starting to become consciously aware of these ripples coming from the future um synchronicities is actually one of the ways it tries to get our attention it even influences things like art and movies and really music is a huge way it tries to communicate with us I mean through something as simple as a song these ripples or reverberations are telling us about this future event and of course you know the space these ripples are coming from it understands that time is an illusion and there's only God's now but it also understands that our paradigm uses linear time. So it makes a concession to try to reach us. And I say us like it's everyone, but really it's more so just the people who haven't closed their mind to the possibility that this form of communication is possible. So what is it that's trying to communicate with us? Well, it's, um, I was going to say it, it's a higher dimension that's overlaid on top of this current reality. And the reason we can't physically see it is because it exists on a higher frequency than ours. But it's there. Um, just to give an analogy, it's kind of like how when you turn a fan on high and the blades move so fast that you can kind of see through them, it's kind of like that. And I know this all sounds crazy, but you'll see when I play these songs. And really, it doesn't sound that crazy when we think of this higher dimension as the place that exists on the other side of the veil. And the veil is thinning. We can all see that. And as it continues to thin, the messages from Source are only going to get louder. And um, the reason I say the messages are rippling back from the future is because in the future we'll eventually end up merging with that higher dimension not all at once and not the entire world it happens through each individual's consciousness and it's already starting to happen now to some people it seems to come and go in waves I know that sounds vague but it's hard to describe now, if you don't have ears to hear and you pledged your alignment to the lower collective consciousness hive mind, then no, these concepts aren't going to resonate with you, and that's fine. For the rest of you guys, I have a radio challenge I want you all to try. But before I, I go over um, how it works, I want to show you guys some of the radio challenge results I got on my own. And um, these are common themes you're going to get too when you do this radio challenge. So as I was listening to the music, the one word that kept coming up was the word day. So what happens is when these higher dimensional ripples get overlaid on top of a song, it's like a transmission gets sent out and the song's meaning changes. It instantly got rid of the literal meaning and changed a day to mean a time of spiritual awakening. 
and the same thing happened with the word dawn in the lyrics. I don't claim to know all the mechanisms behind how it works, but it's almost like a mini download that'll happen when certain parts of the song stick out. But it's only when we slow down and really take our time with the radio challenge steps. But um, I'm gonna get to those steps in a minute. But as I was listening to the lyrics, the word on turned into instructions telling us to turn our mind on, to tune into source communication and Christ consciousness. And, you know, when I say Christ consciousness, I'm not using it in a dogmatic way. It's just a higher state of being where you feel totally connected to God's unconditional love. I mean, it's so strong that it's literally an altered state of consciousness. But um, the songs also mention the words going, left, go, door, and out which all got changed into a metaphor about leaving a lower state of consciousness to merge with a higher state of consciousness because it's only in that higher state of consciousness where we can experience that indescribable Christ consciousness and you know it really it really does feel intoxicating when you're in it like it really does it's like an expansion that I can't find any words for but um and the lyrics the homophone by by got changed to by b-y-e as in saying goodbye to a lower state of consciousness to merge with that higher state of consciousness see these communication transmissions are so intelligent it uses wordplay to get the attention of those people who are meant to hear it but without disturbing the people who aren't if the veil were to just totally disappear all at once and literally broadcast everything to everyone, there would be mass hysteria among the lower collective consciousness. And they'd probably call anyone who accepted the messages witches. Like, we're talking that kind of scenario. And it's not that we're wrong for keeping an open mind. It's just there's more of them than us right now. But um, when I did the radio challenge, the word in got changed into directions telling us to go inside our heart within our own God center instead of focusing on the external material world. And keep in mind, all these messages came through your average songs you'd hear on the radio. Like they're not Christian songs or gospel songs. These ripples can use all kinds of different songs. The three songs I'm going to play at the end of this video um, are actually, they came out decades apart from each other, yet they all seem to be talking about the same future event. And honestly, I don't think it matters what decade a song was released, because I think the ripples probably reach back to the very beginning of human history. All of our past was influenced, not controlled, but gently influenced it's not affecting it's not just affecting the present day and keep in mind too our present day is still considered the past from the perspective of this future merging event and like I said in my last video I don't think it's going to be a one-time event I think this merging or thinning of the veil I think it's a process that's going to continue to accelerate as it pulls us closer like a magnet and the radio transmissions will tell you about it through different archetypes and song metaphors. Basically, we're returning back to our natural higher state of consciousness. And our natural state of consciousness isn't this lower state of consciousness that everyone here calls normal. The only reason we think it's normal is because we fell into a state of amnesia when we were born. And um, the songs I'm going to play even mention words like memories, before, um, the word back. Those are all key words about how we're returning back to our Christ consciousness state again. And it's that higher state of consciousness that's on the other side of the veil in a higher dimension. It's what's pulling us towards it. There's even a line in one of the songs that says, quote, 
slipped into patterns of what happened before, unquote. Now, from our human perspective, it looks like it's going to happen in the future, but really it's already happened. It's already there waiting for us, trying to get our attention. In fact, every time you hear songs mention a female name or female pronoun, it's literally calling your name. Um, there's multiple lines in one of the songs I'm going to play that mentions the word she, which um, it turned into a chain reaction where it changed into a code word for mother, which stood out as a metaphor for Mother Earth, aka New Earth. I'm telling you guys that these transmissions happen so quickly, you really have to slow down to catch them. But basically, that song line was talking about how each of our consciousnesses are what make up the higher collective consciousness. And that's what New Earth is. It's a higher collective consciousness Earth where we experience Christ consciousness. It's right here in the same space in a slightly higher vibration superimposed on top of this reality. We just have to tune into it to access it. Like, some people are already starting to experience waves of Christ consciousness that come and go. They're indescribable. They're absolutely indescribable. And when you're in it, it's like, there's no doubt. There's no question of why you're here and what you are. Like, each of us is a piece of new earth. We're her. And we don't have to die to experience this higher state of consciousness either. Our body will continue to live on earth, but it's our state of consciousness that's going to change drastically. Now, I don't think it'll change for everyone. I think we're only a small number. It seems like the majority of people are basically fused to the lower collective consciousness earth. So they'll continue to live alongside us in that low frequency earth uh it's pretty crazy when you think about it um there could be two people in the same room sharing the same space but one of those people is on new earth while the other person is still on the lower collective consciousness earth that that makes sense but um one of the songs mentions the word world, which took on a double meaning. So it stood out as a reference to an individual's consciousness uh, and new earth. And then the word old instantly changed to a reference about growing older spiritually and evolving to feel closer to God. And um, the homophone night, N-I-G-H-T, changed to represent a time most are spiritually blind and asleep to a higher state of consciousness. But then there's other parts of the songs where the homophone morphs to night, K-N-I-G-H-T, as in night of God or warrior for God or like armor of God. And um, the words life and free in the lyrics changed into a metaphor for God's life force or Christ consciousness. And then the last words I wanted to code are home and miles. Home morphed into a metaphor that represents the place within your God center where we connect with God and feel at home. And then miles was a reference about being miles away from this lower collective consciousness state and a higher state of consciousness where God's love is actually felt. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play these three songs so you can tune into the transmissions for yourself. Um, that's one of the main reasons I never decode the whole song. It's something each person should do for themselves. And you know, a lot of times the codes will come out pretty similar because it's all talking about the same universal truths. But my transmissions aren't necessarily going to be identical to another person's transmissions because it, it works by reflecting each person's unique spiritual journey back to that specific person. And um, the messages also depend on what space you're in as you're listening to the song in real time. That's why I always say we got to slow down and stop 
focusing on all the distractions like stop focusing on the past stop focusing on the future and just be present in the here and now with god because these transmissions will never violate anyone's free will and force someone to hear the messages it's up to us to tune into them by focusing our attention on god's love as we're listening to the music it's up to us to be open to the idea that there's never a time when God isn't communicating with us. And you know, with these transmissions, sometimes it won't always use proper grammar because it's trying to describe the infinite. Um, what I found is the main way it sends messages is by changing who is singing the song to you. There's been so many times where the human artist singing the song just disappears. And it's like, it's just me and God having a conversation through the music. I know that sounds kind of weird, but just try it for yourself. Just take a moment to slow down and stop focusing on all the negative distractions and just be present with God and only focus on God's love as you're listening to these three songs. And in your mind, really ask yourself, God, if you could send me a message or a sign through this song, what would you wanna tell me about? Staring out into the night Trying to hide the pain I'm going to the place where love And feeling good don't never cost a thing In the pain you feel a different kind of pain Is it? 
to say these songs have absolutely nothing to do with romantic relationships and you'll see once you try this radio challenge on your own you're going to find 99.9% of songs aren't talking about romantic relationships they're talking about the love between God and us it's telling us about our destiny and I promise you if you have ears to hear you're not going to be able to ignore these higher messages that are being sent through the music. But the key is you have to turn your mind on to expand your awareness beyond this lower collective consciousness earth. There's more to our existence than this everyday lower collective consciousness earth. You have to tune into the new earth and, um, If anyone's interested in hearing more about these ripples that are reverberating back to us, I'm going to put a link in the description below to a video I just did. Um, It's titled, Testimony of a Higher Dimension Intertwined with Earth. And I actually have a whole playlist that goes into detail about this. And at the end of those videos, I usually um, play a few songs so people can practice tuning into the communication. So... I'll put a link to that consciousness arc playlist in the description below. And um, in those videos, um, I do talk in some of those videos about the technological singularity too, but I don't really talk about it too much just because it's kind of a, a dark topic. But anyways, I challenge everyone listening to this video to try the radio challenge on your own. So the challenge is 
turn your radio on to your favorite station. Um, I would say try to use some kind of commercial free radio if you can. And for at least one hour or more, do the five steps as you're listening to the music and leave a comment about your radio challenge results. So real quick, the five steps are number one, focus on feeling God's love and a sense of gratitude. This is to raise your emotional frequency as high as you can to sync up with God's love frequency. And again, you're going to do all this as you're listening to the song. Number two, clear your mind of all distractions. Stop thinking about the past. Stop thinking about the future and be present in the now with God. Number three, remember that there is never a time when God is separated from you. And understand that God is constantly communicating with you in countless ways. Number four, as you're listening to the lyrics, continue to focus only on God's love throughout the entire song. Don't stop focusing on God's love at any point during the song. And then the last step, number five, sincerely ask yourself, God, if you could send me a message or a sign through this song, what would you want to tell me about? So... Those are the five steps. Don't forget to use a commercial free radio source. And um, I wish you guys the best of luck with your radio challenge. I'll talk to you all later.